Hi friends, I hope you guys all had a fabulous Easter. He has risen indeed. Um, today we are gonna work on um, kind of diving into the plant sale and talking about the varieties we're um, gonna be carrying. I have had a lot of questions about um, what we will have available and everything like that. Again, those dates are April 28th, 29th, and 30th at our place in Elk Point, South Dakota. Um, so as we, uh, Elba, lay down, lay down girl. As we talk about um, the varieties, I'm gonna just work on up potting a few more of my tomatoes that I have left to do. Um, also have some bricks to move later um, that we got for another project coming up in the works here. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, for tomatoes, we I know we've talked about a few of these, what we have available. Um, first, we are going to be having Abe Lincoln. Um, pretty solid tomato in regards to size, um, as well as um, like, actual meat on it um, I love the flavor of them I have not grown them myself from seed I've always bought them at um, at local stands and whatnot but I'm really excited uh, to have them here for you guys um, we're also gonna have of course my favorite uh, Dr. Witchies um, why she's witchies everyone pronounces it a little different um, this is my beyond favorite tomato to put on sandwiches, um, like a BLT or just a plain old tomato sandwich. Um, super uh, juicy, wonderful flavor. Yes, it is supposed to be orange, um, but it tastes fantastic. Um, if you missed what I'm doing, or uh, missed my video about up potting tomatoes, I basically just bury them really deep, cut off the bottom um, leaves, and then they'll grow up and get even stronger from there. But back to, our varieties. Um, the next um, variety for tomatoes we are going to have our San Marzano 2 paste. Um, we grew these last year, super duper prolific, um, really good flavor. Definitely a slicing, or excuse me, definitely a canning paste sauce um, tomato. It doesn't have a ton of meat on it, um, but it is also uh, has good flavor um, and does does it a great job for like our canning and we made a lot of salsa out of it. Really have enjoyed that. Um, it is now our third, third season with those, um, with that variety. And um, yeah, we, we enjoy the San Marzano. Um, next one is a mushroom basket, H huge tomato. Um, have had lots of good feedback on it. Um, I have, again, I've never actually tried this one, but I always try to add one or two new themes every year um, for fun. Um, looks like it's pretty meaty. Um, another kind of like a Dr. Witchies where it's more, I think, for sandwiches and things like that. Um, maybe tomato pie, that kind of stuff, um, where you need um, a little bit heartier, a lot more flesh, that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Black Beauty is a next, the next tomato. Um, it is literally black in flesh with the skin, um, but the inside is pure red, just like um, you know, a typical tomato. All right, so now we're gonna get into like our um, cherry tomatoes, our smaller tomatoes, stuff like that. Um, first one is Chadwick Cherry Classic. Um, we grew this last year and had much success with it. It's just your typical red cherry tomato. Um, next we have our yellow pear, um, which I absolutely love. I put it on almost every salad. I eat in the summer. I will be taking off handfuls of them as we walk around the garden and um, really love yellow pear. Uh, super prolific, like one of my best stewers and, um, and they honestly store really well. We even made like a yellow salsa out of it because we had so many last year. Um, and so that was also really fun. Um, uh, to just experiment with new things. Um, so I think we, if I remember right, we put a bunch of yellow pear tomatoes, some of our San Marzanos, because we just had so many of them, um, and, and made them a salsa. Added, I think, a little bit of corn, kind of just went with it, and um, very, very yummy. So now my bumblebee tomatoes. Uh, this is a new one that I had for the first time last year. Super tasty. Probably one of my new favorite uh, cherry tomatoes. It is so good um, that I had to go buy some seeds and do it myself. Um, I had that at a tomato test last year with some neighbors um, and I really enjoyed that. And so I'm like, we're gonna have that this year um, at Minted Kettle. Next one is Berry Crazy Cherry. Uh, very, very, very popular, known if you, um, 
you know, see a lot of Baker Creek stuff. Um, very good, very prolific, and it kind of produces in clusters, kind of like grapes, but it's yellow, and um, and a little bit more of a, a dull flavor, um, but still very good. A spoon tomatoes, these are itty bitty. Also, another thing I had for the first time last season, um, that I'm like, my kids are just gonna love these. They literally are like the size of like an eraser on the end of a pencil. And they, um, from what I hear, are hard, a little bit difficult to uh, harvest because they're so tiny. Um, you literally just have to take them off in branches kind of and then strip them in your house. Um, but I thought my kids would love them. They're super sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, I'm gonna plan on bringing them on my salads every night at work and um, and just have kind of, as I'm walking through the garden, a handful of them. Um, I really, really liked these as well last year and I'm excited to have them. I was told that it, you really only need one plant unless you're like obscene numbers if you're just doing it for your family because they're that prolific. So we're just gonna, we just did one for ourselves, but we'll have a few more for you guys at the plant sale too if you wanna try something new and fun. Um, definitely try the spoon tomatoes. Um, Let's see, Chadwick, yellow, berries crazy. We hit on all of our cherry tomatoes. Um, I am gonna do one type of tomatillo. We're doing a lavender, a purple tomatillo, tomatillo um, key for salsa and kind of add a little spunk with the red. Um, it's just purple. Um, very good flavor though and um, will be is great for any of you guys salsa makers. Um, we will have purple tomatillos at the, the sale also. Next, we're on to our cucumbers. Those were all of our tomatoes that I can think of. Um, we are having four cucumbers this year. We have the, um, to start with a Market More slicer. It's like a typical everyday slicer, green. Had great success with them last year. Very prolific, um, good flavor. Um, just an all around solid cucumber. Um, next is the Boston pickling cucumber. We did this last year and it was fantastic for our pickles. We are still, it's so prolific, we're still eating ours from canned pickles from last year um, and have just loved them. So good. Um, they are good at any size really. Like you can get the typical pickle size or you could do like a full on, like a little smaller than a cucumber um, and can those and it was, they're very, very good. Um, we do love our Mexican sour gherkin, which is basically like a little cucumber or sometimes my kids call it like a little watermelon. Um, literally, you can just like pick them off the tree and start eating them. Um, a little sweet, a little sometimes even sour, um, but they're so tasty, very healthy snack that the kids just love. Uh, gorgeous, they bind up, very prolific. Again, something you might only need one or two plants of. Um, so we usually put ours on an arch trellis um, so it can, it can uh, grow around and then as we walk through it we just pick handfuls and um, that's a really fun one if you have kiddos as well. Our, are those all of them? Oh, last one, our one new cucumber we're adding this year is the Silver Slicer. Um, this was recommended by fellow gardeners um, saying that it's super prolific, best flavor they've ever had and um, like I said, I'm really, I've been kind of stuck on the market more, but um, I wanted to try it. It does sound like it, it really it has more of like a, like albino or a whitey, a white flesh, um, but tastes just like a green cucumber. So we're excited to try that one here. Kale, kale, and more kale. I love me some kale. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Um, and we have four different varieties this year. Uh, last year, our one and only variety we did was the Dwarf Curled Kale. Um, super prolific. Literally, we had three plants that last us the entire summer here in South Dakota. Um, they didn't bolt, they didn't, uh, they just, they were really solid. They lasted a while, had, and just great flavor. Um, really enjoyed that. We decided that I wanted to experiment with some other stuff because my love for kale has grown so much this year. And so we are doing three new ones on top of the dwarf kale. Um, so we have a scarlet kale, which is uh, like a purple coloration. Um, I have seen that it's still kind of green in its earlier um, moments of life. And so if you, the longer it grows, the more you use it and just it keeps rejuvenating, it will become more purple. Um, so that'll be really cool. We're gonna do some dino kale. 
um, which will be awesome for like smoothies and stuff like that. Um, and then we are doing a ragged jack, which I heard is great for like, if you're a, a kale salad lover, um, which I am. Uh, so we are gonna be doing those three new ones. So ragged jack, scarlet kale, and um, dino kale. For lettuce, uh, gonna be doing three of three lettuces. Two of them I'm familiar with, one of them is a new one to us. So my two that I'm familiar with are Butter Crunch and the North Pole Butterhead. Um, both these I have grown before. I grow them more into like individual greens. You can though grow these into um, uh, like a head of lettuce and uh, they you can eat them that way as well and then harvest all at once. A new one to our property is Henderson's Black Seeded Simpson. Um, also another one that was recommended really excited about this one so far it's been growing lovely it's growing really strong really sturdy um and so we'll, we're excited to see what will come from that this year um we're doing one round of spinach or one variety um and i'm gonna probably slaughter this Gigante di Averno. Basically, it was a large spinach that i could use for like wraps and so i wanted to try that because i love me some lettuce wrap. Alrighty, so now we're gonna be going on to winter squash. So we are gonna have four different varieties. We have butternut squash, saffron squash, pineapple squash, and um, spaghetti squash. I love spaghetti squash by heart. That is one that I'm really used to. My husband and I grow that a lot. Um, so we are gonna be growing that for sure. Um, saffron squash by request, um, have a lot of people who like it. Um, I, I enjoy it, but we just don't cook with it as much. Um, but we will have some of those. I'll bust up picking on the kitty. Um, pineapple squash looked like a really fun squash to, um, to stuff. And so we are, we really like to do that kind of stuff in regards to, hey honey. Um, we really like to do that kind of stuff with like our butternut squash. So we're going to try that as well with the pineapple. So for peppers, we have three hot and three sweet. So we are going to be doing for hot, a tame jalapeno, a nata pino, and a sugar rush peach. Um, nata pino I hear is basically like a heatless jalapeno. Um, in certain reviews, it, I've had people say that it still does have a tiny bit of kick. Um, so that's why I'm still classifying it as a hot one. Um, the tame jalapeno we did last year, and honestly, it was fantastic. It just was like a typical jalapeno for us. Sugar Rush Peach, it's our first year growing, um, and we hear it is pretty, pretty hot. Got some good kick to it. We're gonna use that a lot for some salsa, gonna use that for our cowboy candy, um, and yeah, we, we're excited to use that for some extra flavor, uh, for sure. For our sweet peppers, we are using, um, we are growing our banana pepper, um, korbaki pepper, as well as a jaguar F1 hybrid. Um, that is gonna be like a typical green bell. Um, we, we had these last year and they did decent. Um, they weren't as large as I thought they were gonna be. For us, they were more like a softball size compared to like some of the green peppers you can see at the store. Um, banana, uh, again, we like putting them together with cowboy candy, stuff like that. Um, korbaki, um, I heard they're very prolific and um, have also just a nice flavor. So we are excited to try that one. That's one of our new ones this year. A couple more things we have to cover. Um, don't have as many varieties, but wanted to add some stuff. We have cabbage for all you sauerkraut lovers. We are going to be growing the glory of Akuzin. Probably slaughtering that name. Um, they've grown up great so far. Super beautiful, very sturdy. Um, looking forward to that. So we have a limited supply of those, but we do have some. Cauliflower, we have an amazing cauliflower, which is a white variety. And then a purple of Sicily, which is a purple, um, has kind of like a top layer of purple um, hue on it, uh, cauliflower. For broccoli, we are doing a Bell Star hybrid, and that is gonna be just like a typical, nothing too fancy broccoli. Um, good flavor though. Um, Brussels sprouts, we have Red Reuben, which is a red Brussels sprout. Um, I last year had a difficult time with my 
uh, squash bugs, still in a moss stage, uh, ate my Brussels sprouts down to the bone. So this year we are going to be using some cover um, on them over um, a low tunnel. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that handles and hopefully our Brussels sprouts can stay alive a little longer than they did last year. Um, eggplant, we are going to be having two varieties, a ping tongue, which is kind of like a like a thick marker size, like like slender, long, um, and then uh, the Black Beauty, which is like a big meaty eggplant. Another thing you could do for like stuffy. Two new things for us this year are melons, or the two, we have two types of melons that will be new to us. We are gonna do the famous Kajari melon that so many gardeners have heard great things about. I don't know how they're gonna work, um, how it's gonna grow exactly in our climate, being that we are a little colder, um, but we're gonna see how that goes. Um, and then we're also doing the Kiki chrysanthemum, which um, it is so fun. It literally can like fit in the palm of your hand. You can just take a bite out of it. Um, I thought my kids would love that. So um, last thing to note, we will have an array of flowers. A lot of them are mixes, so I don't have like very specific names with them. Other than we will have some sunflower six packs, zinnias, some basil either in like a larger plant that's in an individual four by four or a six pack of a variety of smaller ones. Um, we'll have some chamomile, have some aster. Mostly we'll be like the zinnias and the sunflowers. So I don't have a ton of flowers this year, but if you find or some cosmos, I think are in there too. Um, but if you have any things that you would like me to grow next year, any things that you're wondering about that maybe I forgot to just mention, um, that's kind of what we're looking at for the plant sale. As I was reviewing our list for the plant sale and all the varieties we are starting, I realized I have missed two. First, it is the Black Beauty Zucchini. We really enjoy growing this uh, for, for like a ratatouille type of dish or a zucchini lasagna. Um, really like this variety, very prolific um, and has been doing well. We also are growing a new um, type of celery this year called pink plume celery. That is what you see right above you right now, that light green blown in the wind. Um, has been super prolific, super strong, um, but we're excited because it literally has pink stalks. Um, heard it stores really well and um, has very good flavor. So we are excited to bring that to you guys this year at Mended Kettle Farms. Again, last weekend in April, the 28th, 29th, and 30th at, in Elk Point, South Dakota, at our place, will be probably about 8 a.m. to 6 p.m.-ish, depending on demand and what we have left for um, starts. Now that we have um, talked about our plants, we are gonna go move those bricks um, that I got. Um, we are gonna be using these for a greenhouse that Seth is gonna build me. We'll go from there.